Today, we're going to apply Maya's dynamic hair to a dazed model. This is pretty much what the model looks like when it comes in from dazed. The hair from dazed doesn't look too bad in a still image as we see here. However, in a dynamic simulation, the dazzed hair is just not very believable. If we go to wireframe mode, we can see that the dazzed hair is made out of mesh. If we bend the model back at the stomach, we can see that the dazzed hair has no dynamic properties whatsoever. Today we're using a Dell laptop. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, as well as an Intel i7 that runs at about 2.3 gigahertz. The video card is a generic one gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce. The first thing you want to do when working with Maya's dynamic hair is make a hair system. The hair system attaches to the faces of a polygon, so we're going to create a polygon. We have one face. We're going to select it and go up to the N Dynamics menu under N Hair, Create Hair Options box. And we want to use a Paint Effects hair as opposed to a NURBS. We're going to attach at the selected surfaces. We want it to collide with mesh. We also want it to have one hair per clump to be dynamic, to have 50 points per hair. And we're gonna start out with the default setting. This hair is a little bit shorter than the one that we want for this example. So we'll make it a little bit longer. We're going to select the face again. Go to create hair. We're going to increase the length to 15. This hair is a little bit longer than the hair that we want to work with today. So we're going to undo and create it yet a third time. You notice here in the timeline, our timeline is way too short. So we're going to increase the timeline to 1000 frames. His hair is obviously sticking down through the grid. So after three tries, I find that using a length of 10 is about what we need for our simulation today. Not forgetting to increase the timeline to a thousand frames. Sometimes the dynamic hair doesn't work unless you first select it. Here we have our hair affected by gravity. If you'll notice, it bounces when we first hit the dynamic simulation. So we're going to add a ruler so that we can get a better idea of the length of our hair. Just making a simple plane in the front view, going to attach a new material. 
we'll just pick a basic Lambert. And then in the color, I'm going to add a checker texture. I'm going to adjust my UVs. Looks like we want to use the V, not the U. So we're going to set the U at 2 and the V to 16 to give us a nice ruler. Going to load the side view and observe how the hair stretches below the grid. That makes it look very rubbery, and we're trying to make human hair, so we don't want it to stretch that much. We go into the hair shape under the attribute editor under clump hair and shape collisions dynamic properties the bottom you'll see no stretch now if we run our simulation again while the hair is still bouncy it does not stretch beyond the length of 10. next we're going to add a simple sphere so we can use it as a collision object to check the density and the bounciness. I'm going to set the collide strength on our sphere to 2. and make sure that it is in fact colliding with our dynamic hair. We're increasing our timeline to 2000 frames so that we'll be able to work interactively. By opening up the NHair tab on the shelf, it has interactive playback, which is the fourth button to the left. Now we can use our sphere to check the density of the hair and see how buoyant it is. This hair still looks really rubbery. It looks more like a rubber band than it does a human hair. So we're going to go under our paint effects hair in the hair shape. Going to scroll down into forces. First, we're going to the clump hair and shape. Going to increase the hairs per clump to 20. Increase the clump width to 1. If you'll notice, the hair clump width adjusts the bottom of the clump, but not the top. We want to use the clump width scale to adjust the top width. Here we're using thinning. If you'll notice, it adjusts the hairs randomly throughout the clump so that they don't look like they're all the same length. However, our hair clump is still bouncing around. Once again, going to our hair system shape. 
under our dynamic properties under forces, we're going to add motion drag of 0.1 and dampening of 2. This should make our hair bounce a little less. Right here, I'm adjusting the plane by rotating it just a bit so that the hair will slide off it. By adding the dampening and the motion drag, now you can see that our hair reacts more like human hair and less like a rubber band. Given the response that we would expect while running fingers through it or having it bounce off the shoulders. Next, we're going to take a look at collisions. We want our hair to self-collide. We're going to turn on the collision thickness. And you can see that it fairly much follows the shape of the clump. Since we only have one hair clump, we don't need to use self-collide. If you'll notice, when we increase the width scale on the top of the clump, it'll spread the top of the clump apart. When we hit play, we'll notice that our hair still looks rather jagged, as you can see the CV end joints showing up as angular polygons on the hair. By increasing the subsegments, it takes away this angled look of our hair. We can also increase the bend links, which has the same effect as increasing the subsegments. Giving the hair a more natural curve. We'll also notice that we can't use our collision sphere just by pressing play. We have to use the interactive play to make our collide sphere work. You'll notice that changing the bend links also has a slight effect on the motion of the hair as it collides with our sphere. The point of this exercise is that you don't need a supercomputer to do dynamic simulations. We can check all of our settings using just a single hair. Here we're going to change from paint effects to a NURBS hair. We're checking out our points per hair. When we create the hair, we notice that it has 50 controlled vertexes on it. These are what create the dynamic bend links. When we see the angular look in the paint effects hair, this is what we are seeing, is the interaction of the CVs on the paint effects curve. 
Using a NURBS hair, we get the same effect by adding subsegments or extra bend links. This is the part of the curve that they affect. Now we're going to delete our NURBS hair and go back to using our paint effects hair. If we choose the grid function as opposed to the at faces, then under the U and V count it will add 8 by 8 hairs plus 1 passive fill. As you can see, this is many more hairs. There are 8 hairs per U coordinate and 8 hairs per V coordinate plus a passive follicle in between each of the other follicles. It's rather difficult to see up close, but if we hide the hair, we'll see that the active follicles show up as red and the passive follicles show up as blue. The active follicles will interact with our collision objects, while the passive follicles will just follow the motion of the active follicles nearest to them. The purpose of this is so that we can have more hairs while using less computing from our software. We have to associate our collision object with the new nucleus node in order to get it to interact with our hair system. By using the passive follicle system, you'll see that we can get a great deal of hairs per face with very little strain on our CPU or our RAM. There's probably near 2,000 hairs in this simulation right now. If we look at our clumps, you can see that the hair is clumped together and that they will act dynamically as a clump and not individually. This can be undesirable as it produces strange results. By reducing our hair clump to one, we'll see that each of the follicles interacts independently, as opposed to a hair clump which acts together as a single unit. Now that we understand the basic principles of our n-hair system, we're going to go back to using a single hair. We're not going to use straight hair because straight hair is boring. Oftentimes in real life, Hair has a slight curve or a curl to it. So we're going to show how to add depth and curls to our hair. If we go under the displacements menu, we have a curl function. It only goes up to 
which isn't very curly. But if you enter your own number in, you can make it larger. We're going to start with 10. Under the curl frequency, we can change how many curls there are per inch. We're going to start out with a value of 15. Adding noise and noise frequency adds some randomness into your curl. Next, we have the displacement scale. We're going to use the simple linear curve. This, however, does not look very natural. So we're going to add a bell curve to show a more natural slope between the root of the hair and the curl at the end. We're going to use clean numbers, setting the first at 0.4 and 0.1, the second at 0.7 and 0.5. We're also going to add a spline onto the third node. Now that we have the shape of the hair that we're looking for, we notice that our collision does not look natural. The hair is penetrating into the sphere. And when we use our collision force, the collision doesn't interact until it reaches the center of the curl. This is not the effect that we want to look for. We can figure out why by turning on the solver display under collisions. If we set our collision thickness, you can see that the collision thickness is gauged primarily by the width of the hair down the center of the length. This is where the collision interaction is happening between the sphere and the hair, which is why the curl is penetrating into the sphere. So we can increase the collision thickness under the PFX hair under the hair system collisions, we're going to look for the collide width offset. If we increase this to 0.5, we see that the collide strength is at 0.5 down the entire length of the hair. This is not the type of reaction that we're looking for either. Leaving it at about 0.1, we get the proper length for the base of the hair near the root. In order to increase the bottom of the collision offset while leaving the top at the same, we're going to go down to our clump width scale. At the bottom, we'll move the clump width scale to the very bottom, and at the top, we'll move it all the way up to the very top. We're going to set these both to linear then we're going to add two more points, remembering the values that we used for our curl frequency, which were 0.4 and 0.1 for the first node, and 0.7 and 0.5 for the second. Remembering to turn the third node into a spline. We also want to increase the clump width, otherwise we won't see a reaction. By increasing the clump width to 1, we see that it is about congruent with the curls at the bottom of our hair, now giving us a natural collision, setting it up to about 1.5, gives it enough width to cover the curl. Now the curl does not penetrate into the sphere. and we get the type of collisions that we would expect from a curled hair.
we're going to turn our solver display off. So we can see how the hair interacts with the collide sphere. It's still penetrating just a bit. So we'll play around with the clump width scale until we get the reaction that we want. Now that we have our collision thickness set properly, then we can move along. Next, we're going to work on color. The hair comes with a self shader. First, we'll increase our hairs per clump to about 50 so we can see the diversity of the hair. We're going to switch to mental ray. We have to use paint effects hairs to have it visible in mental ray. We're going to add a spotlight to light the hair so that we can see the specular qualities. We're going to go to panels and look through selected so we can aim our light correctly. This will give us some nice shadows. We're going to set up the film gate so we know what we're rendering. This is the default shader that comes with the paint effect hair, a rather drab brown color. We go down to shading, we see we have a choice of color. I've always been partial to blondes, so we'll try to use blonde for an example. We're just moving down to a medium yellow color. Also, remembering to lower the specular color to a lighter color as well. Now we have blonde hair. And I forgot to move my spotlight.
we want to make sure that we're using ray traced shadows. And we're going to go back to our hair shader. Increasing our clumps to 100 hairs per clump so that we can really see the diversity of the color. Down at the bottom of color, we have color randomization. We're going to increase the randomization on the hue and saturation to about 25 and 50%. Difficult to see on a single clump, so we're going to add several clumps to our collision sphere. We're also going to turn on multi streaks. We're going to use about seven. Also, difficult to see using a single clump. It's going to ask us if we want to use the same hair system to add hair to our sphere. We'll select yes, use hair system one. And now our predefined settings are already added onto the hair. We're going to raise the base of our clump width scale so that the hairs look like they naturally blend together on the faces of the sphere. First, we'll turn down our multi streaks and our saturation and hue randomization so that we can get a baseline to compare with. Again, remembering to change our spotlight. So now we have a baseline of our blonde hair. We're going to save it, deleting our previously saved hair. Then we'll add our randomness to our color. Again, adding about 25% random saturation in hue. You can see a slight difference in the variation between the hue and the saturation of the hair, but it does not make a great difference. We'll also save this one and compare both of them to the multi streaks. Setting the multi streaks at about 7, we'll do another render. You can definitely see the difference between the multi streaks and the difference in hue and saturation. So now that we have a hair system that we're comfortable using, we can save it. We can also add a custom shader into the hair color. We're going to add in a Mia Material X. 
It asks us which hairs we want to add in there. We're just going to use our basic diffuse channel, as the paint effect hair was not designed to use a custom shader. We could make connections using the component editor. But we're just going to graph our Mia Material X. Select our paint effects hair and drag and drop it into the slot. It still asks us for a connection. So we're going to use the basic RGB of the diffuse and connect it into the in color of the hair. Setting the basic functions of our Mia Material X, adding our blonde color, increasing the translucence, transparency, while reducing the reflectivity and the glossiness, adding just a touch of transparency, also reducing the refractive glossiness, and adding translucency. Make sure that our BDRF Fresnel reflections are turned on. And that should about do it for the settings in our Mia Material X. Reflectivity when white is turned all the way up, so we'll reduce our reflectivity by dropping down to a medium gray. Since we're using the same blonde color, it isn't easy to, show, to see an apparent difference in between our Mia Material X and our basic shader. We can also change our hair to polygons by selecting the hair Here again, I'm trying to add the material to the paint effects hair, but it just doesn't want to go. We can tell this because there would be a texture menu in the attribute editor. But we can see that there's not, so the Mia Material X is not attached. We select our hair, go to Convert, and Paint Effects to Polygons. We can convert our hair to Polygon Mesh. We want to select Quad Outputs and increase our poly limit to the maximum. Unfortunately, it will only allow us to convert 1 million polygons which isn't nearly enough even to do this simple hair system covering a quarter of our sphere. However, now, using our mesh, we can attach our Mia Material X. Which might be a simple solution if you're not using as many hairs as you would in a scenario like this one. Perhaps using the hair for a pet or a male who has short hair, beard, or even eyebrows. But it gives you an idea of what our Mia Material X looks like compared to the basic hair shader.
we're going to undo our switch to polygons. And check to make sure that 1 million is the maximum amount. Which is all that it will allow us to add. Because of the limits of this effect, this will not work for us in a situation to add dynamic hair to a dazed model. Now that we have the style of the hair that we're looking for and the color of the hair that we're looking for, we can save it as a hair set. We're going to start by deleting all of the tools that we used in the scene. To build our style, we're going to select the hair follicles that were on the sphere, deselect the hair system, and delete only the follicles, leaving the single follicle that we started with to build our hair system. Now we should have one polygon and one hair system. And we're going to save. Are seen just as it is. First, reducing the amount of hairs down to one hair per clump. So that when we import it into our scene, it does not generate a strain on the processor. We're going to name it. Hair, blonde, and curl. A brief description of what type of hair it is. And then we'll save it into our hair library so that we can reference it later when we want to make a hair system. We're going to open up the face shift model that we've used in earlier lessons. Now that we have our scene open, we're going to import our hair system that we've just created. And we want to rename our nucleus to nucleus so that we can use it in the scene. I've made a scalp mesh earlier, so we're going to make it visible, select the faces, and go up to end hair in the end dynamics menu, create hair, open the options box. Make sure that we're on paint effects, one hair per clump, 50 pixels per hair with a length of 10. We're going to create our hairs. We want to make sure that we have the hair system selected that we just imported. As you'll notice, the hair shape that we just created is instantly attached to the model, making it less than 10 minutes to create an entire dynamic hair system for a dazed model. Right now I'm hiding the follicles as well as the scalp shape. Under the nucleus, I'm changing the gravity from negative 1 in Y to negative 1 in Z. Then we're going to select our body mesh, go to Create Passive Collider, and make sure that the nucleus 1 is selected. Then we're going to increase the collide strength to 5 so that the hair will collide with the body. 
Now we want to increase the number of frames to 1000 and hit play. It will pull all of our hair back in the Z direction. Once it's as far back as it will go, we want to select our hair system. Also changing the nucleus back to negative Y and zero in Z. And this will cause our hairs to fall down, giving us a basic hairstyle. If you go into the Maya help under dynamics, you can find more information on styling hair using Colliders, and also other dynamics. We're increasing the hairs per clump to 15 and also adding more spread to the base of our hair clumps. By adjusting the clump width, it also adjusts the size of the curl at the end. If we zoom out, we'll notice that our curls have grown in size by 100%. This is interesting, but it's not the effect that we're looking for. So we're going to reduce our clump width to where it was at 1.5, instead increasing the clump width scale. The word I was looking for earlier is constraints. You can style the hair using different constraints in N-Dynamics. So here, we're doing a render, and you can see that we now have a hair system on our face shift model that we've made in less than 10 minutes on a laptop computer. It is also dynamic hair, so when our model moves, the hair will move with her also reacting to gravity, wind, and turbulence. Going back to the dazed hair, we're going to hide the parts of the mesh that we're not using. As a bonus, I'm going to show you how to add dynamics to the mesh from the dazed hair. We're going to single out one mesh in the dazed hair, and we're going to select the center edge by double-clicking on it. Then we want to go to Modify and Convert Polygon Edges to Curves. Then we're going to take the mesh and the curve that we've created and zoom in so that we can see both of them individually. Then we're going to go up to Animation, Create Deformers, Wire Deformer, the wire tool, we want to open up the options box. We're going to set all the sliders up to the maximum, which should be 1, 1, 1, and 10. Then we want to take our wire tool, first selecting the mesh and pressing enter. Next, we're going to select our curve and press enter, and it makes the mesh a deformer of the curve. So if we grab the vertices on the curve, we notice that the mesh follows wherever the curve moves. This is very interesting, but it doesn't help us with dynamics. Next, we want to go into our foreseen view after I get done playing around with the vertexes, selecting the mesh first, the curve second, and pressing enter after each selection to use our wire deformer. We want to go to our CV Curve tool under Create. And we're going to draw out a simple curve relatively down the center of the hair curl. 
I've drawn it in the top view. So now we have to go into the front and the side view. And move it into position. It doesn't take long to create a custom curve. Selecting it one CV at a time and moving it into position. We don't want to follow the mesh exactly, rather to go down the center of the curl that we see in it. Using both the front and the side to line up our curve. This is a rather time consuming process. You want your CVs to be regularly equal. I have a curve that I've made previously that I'm going to use, but you get the basic idea. We're going to hide the curve that we just made and use the curve that I used earlier. So first we want to select the CV curve, and then we're going to go up to N Dynamics, under N Hair, we're going to Mech Curves Dynamic. We want to select a paint effect hair and attach curves. We're going to turn attach curves off, select our NURBS curve, and make the curves dynamic. Under our hair system, we want to go to the follicle, under the follicle attributes, and change the point lock to base only. Next, we'll go to our hair shape and set a few simple options. We want to set the start and rest position from current. Next, we're going to go to the start curve attract and give it just a small amount, 0 0.001 to start. We'll also reduce the attenuation scale in the front and rear of the hair. We're also going to reduce our stretch resistance from 10 down to 1 so that it makes it more bouncy. As it is that we are driving a piece of geometry not using a curve. That looks like it will work for our needs. Next, we want to go to Animation. Under Create Deformers, we're going to go back to our wire tool. First selecting the curve, then selecting the hair, pressing Enter after each, thus making a dynamic link between them. Now, when we press play, we see that the mesh is affected by the dynamics of the hair, giving us a realistic option to convert our dazzed hair into dynamic hair without using the strain of a dynamic hair system on our computer. Next, we want to select the mesh of our day's model and turn it into a collider. Otherwise, the hair will just travel through the mesh. So we'll go to the end dynamics under the end mesh, create passive collider. We're going to increase the collide strength. And notice that our dynamic mesh now interacts with the dazed model. This is a viable option, but it would take you a great deal of time to make a dynamic hair for each one of the polygons in the hair mesh which just this simple hair system looks like it has approximately 100 polygons. 
we would have to change each one of these polygons into a dynamic mesh. So, while rather time consuming, is possible if you have a slower computer that can't handle the dynamic simulations. 